Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about how to build responsiveness in a dull horse. A horse that has a natural tendency to have thick skin and wear the pressure and be kind of sticky on things. I'm going to show you how to get them light and soft. All right, so we're going to get started here with Snacks and he is a gypsy cross. He's pretty thick skinned. He's pretty confident, kind of a little lazy. Um, he, he is pretty good minded. He's not a real stubborn horse or anything like that, but he, uh, he can easily learn to wear the pressure if we go about this in the wrong way. So one of the common mistakes that we can do on the ground is kind of like I showed in the, uh, the intro, is pushing on them with a big surface area. It's very easy for a horse to lean into that. So whenever I'm asking him to step off from steady pressure, I want him to do it, I want to do it with a small surface area. So for instance, if I'm going to use my hand on his nose, I might just use two fingers, my thumb and my pointer finger here, and just wait for him to step off which is my next point, don't push them. So when they start to move, make sure your feel isn't following them, whether you're riding and it's a leg or you're on the ground and it's your hand, don't follow it, okay? So if I'm using the halter, I'm gonna put a feel and if he leans on it, like right there, I'm gonna touch him with the end of my lead rope and then I'm gonna reset. So I stopped asking, I put a feel on the halter, he leaned on it, I touched him with the Makate and then I released. And then I'm gonna ask again. So as long as I always offer him a light feel first, if you could zoom in on that Gracie, and you can see he's backing up with me just putting my finger, just my finger on that halter. You can see he's even kind of flexing his nose in. That is really soft right there. So the secret to getting a horse soft is as soon as they step off, we release. And one little caveat I gotta put in here. If, if your horse is brand new, they're learning this, they've never been asked to give to a halter, like a young foal or a Mustang or something like that, you don't wanna add that rhythmic pressure and touching them with the end of the lead rope. Okay, don't do that. You wanna teach them to step off that feel. You wanna hold, wait for them to step off, and then release. So that's the caveat to this. Once you're past the teaching stage, which is basically three times, as soon as you've done it three times, you're not teaching anymore. So now you're in what I call the reinforcing stage. So you're reinforcing what they already know. So if they're not doing it, it's not because they don't know how, it's because they're saying no, <laughs> or they're leaning on it, okay? And in that case, that's when you wanna not push and pull more with steady pressure. You wanna add a little bit of rhythmic pressure and tap them with something. Not hard, you're not trying to take hide off, you're just giving them a little touch, something that comes on a little bit quicker that catches their attention and kind of maybe even startles them just slightly um, and that gets them to go whoa something happened first and then you go back to the light feel that you offer them first pretty soon you're going to have a horse that went from dull to being very heavy you got to be disciplined about this you got to do it consistently let me go ahead and show you how to get this done in the saddle okay so now that we're in the saddle we're going to talk about getting a horse lighter to our leg cues so it's very easy for a more dull, lazy horse to learn to lean on your leg and, and wear the pressure. And in this particular video, I'm gonna demonstrate this without spurs because I wanna um, show the point that it's more about how you ride your horse and the feel and timing than it really is about whether you have spurs on or not. Spurs are great for maintaining that level of responsiveness, but they're, a lot of people think that they're used to just make your horse go faster by just kicking him harder, which is not at all. It's about refining the point of contact so that instead of your heel pressing on the horse where they could lean on that fairly easily, you're refining it to a smaller point of contact that's touching them, okay? So basically, they're just less likely to learn to lean on that. Um, but again, if somebody uses a spur incorrectly, they could learn to be just as heavy on a spur as they are a heel, okay? So the feel and timing is what really matters. Okay, so I'm gonna put my leg on him here and I'm gonna ask him to yield and he's not moving. Now, if I was teaching him this, if this was a colt, I would just kind of add in my rein here and I would just hold and wait for him to step off. But like we said in the groundwork, if they're, if they've already, um, if they're not learning how to do it, you're reinforcing it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press my leg, he's not moving, and then I'm gonna touch him with the stick. I'm not trying to whack him or hit him hard enough to make him do it. I'm trying to get him to pay more attention to that cue 
coming on before the stick came. So I changed my life, I changed my body, my leg comes on, touch, reset, okay? Do that again. I'm, I'm kind of switching sides so that you guys can see here. Leg on, and there he started to move right away, okay? Let's try that again. We'll do it on this side. Leg on, touch if I need to, and then reset. Now, if they're already moving a little bit, but you want them to move even faster, you just shorten the window of time that they have to move. But the key is, and this is the part a lot of people miss, is if the horse doesn't move, they just keep whacking them. And that's when you can learn to teach, you can teach a horse to wear the pressure. So you're gonna press, he steps off, release. Press, they step off, release. If you need to touch them, touch them once and then reset. Don't keep pushing on that, okay? The same is true for getting that dull horse to go forward. You're gonna bring your energy up, your life up. So when I say the word life up, that means change your intention. So if you were sitting in a chair and you know the speaker is really long-winded and they're gonna talk for a really long time, you're just sitting in the chair thinking, okay, we're gonna be here a while, okay? You're pretty committed to just camping out there. But if you know that at any minute, um, you're gonna get up and you need to go and you need, you're gonna be late, otherwise, um, so you're, you're kind of preparing yourself to, be, to go somewhere, you're gonna sit in that chair with like a readiness to go, okay? So that's what you're, we're talking about when you bring your life up, is you bring your life up, you're thinking about being ready. It doesn't mean that you start kicking or pulling or doing anything, just you're changing your mental state, okay? So life up, squeeze with your legs. If he doesn't go, touch and then reset. And a lot of times I actually like to bring them down even to a standstill. Life up, squeeze, touch, reset. Now, even though he trotted off, I'm still gonna reset because I want him to respect the leg cue and trot off because of the leg cue, not because of the stick. So I had to use my stick again there. Let's try this again. Legs, perfect. He trotted off immediately that time. Very good. Now, the last thing that's really important to note about this idea of building responsiveness is when your horse gets it right and their spring is tightened, they're ready to go, stop. Quit riding, quit asking for that particular thing. Go on to something else or be done, done riding, depending on where you're at in that session. So don't drill for oil on this. This is really key. Um, as the horse becomes more consistent and predictable with being responsive, then you can start to ask for things longer and longer. Um, but to start off with, if, if it was hard to get them going to begin, uh, you don't want to drill them on it once they get it. Once they get it, uh, leave them alone and move on to something else or end the session. So, so that's how I'd go about building responsiveness on a horse. Um, I wouldn't just put more pressure on and keep it there and just um, add more and more. It's about building responsiveness, making it about the psychology and them understanding what it is we're asking for. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and like this video, and we'll see you guys on the next one.